Hello and welcome to Heroes of the Horn, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am Sir Matt. And I am Sir Ezra. Welcome to our Wheel of Time book club. The horn has sounded and we have answered the call. Uh, Today we are covering the prologue, simply. Just the prologue today. Yeah, the prologue of Eye of the World, the first book in Robert Jordan's epic masterpiece, the Wheel of Time series. Dude, are you excited? I am, man. Um, you know, so as as we've kind of said here, um, this is a, a first read for me, a reread for Ezra. Uh, so he's doing his best not to spoil a lot of the <laughs> infinite number of questions that I that I have here as we as we uh, embark on this journey here. But um, yeah, uh, you, you, so we're. I've read at this point up to about chapter 17, which is where um, just where as told me to read. I'm, yeah. I'm going mm-hmm. I'm going at the pace at which as tells me to read and then we record and then we'll then I'll go back, dive back into the books. Um, so I don't want to get too far ahead. And our hope here is that many of you, this is also your first read. Um, you know, as we said in our kind of welcome episode, I think a lot of people are going to be jumping over here from some of our other projects you know, bend the knee or up talking Tolkien, how you hang out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think this is a lot of people's first read of the wheel of time series. Yeah. And also I would say to folks who, if this isn't your first read, you know, there's things to be gleaned or, or, or learned from someone going through their first read. You know, um, there are questions that, that honestly, that Sir Matt has already asked me that I'm like, uh, okay, that's a great question. Yeah, no, like it's 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 not really. It makes me kind of think, oh, what is the answer to that? And let's go, let's go find it, or it will come up later. And it just, it's just kind of neat. So I, I don't know. I think if you're if you've read it before and you want to kind of see how this goes, that that'll be a lot of fun. We also have um, sort of a spoilers Patreon series that we'll be doing where we mm-hmm. go back over the same chapters and try to make connections to way later in the series. Although sometimes, really, the connections were only several books ahead. I mean, th- there there definitely is a uh, like like even in the first book there are there is stuff in there that is flat out uh foreshadowing the very ending of the series and it's it's fantastic mm-hmm. so you know that's that's kind of neat to to think about but yeah so it's it should be fun for everybody and we want it to be kind of just a cool place where we can uh chill out read through the series we're excited about the show coming and you know it's just it's it's an epic epic story that's the thing yeah. like, it's such an epic tale so yeah and so um as we get into this, um, you know, and unlike some of our other projects, this is not going to be a chapter by chapter summary. It's just it's too big. It would uh, I think, yeah. uh, you know, again, again, I did the math and I think it would take us if to do a chapter a week. Um, there's there's so many chapters. I think it would take us over 10 years uh, to do. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so don't think that's going to be the case. But. Um, we're obviously this is today we're just covering one chapter, so it may be a little more in depth, obviously, because we're just talking one. But as we go forward, it's mostly going to be big takeaways of the group of chapters that we have. Yeah. And, and a big thing, too, is we're hoping that you'll kind of send us, uh, you know, like an email or comments and we can kind of read some of what your thoughts are. And all those will be read by me. Uh, I, I read through them and, and I want to kind of see, you know, what mm-hmm. we can read, what we can't read, uh, uh, something spoiler, non-spoiler. And that, it'd be nice if pe- people can just kind of label it that way, too. It'd be real easy and I can kind of pull it up and, and get your thoughts because it, it is still kind of a it's it's a book club. And we, we, we are kind of uh, if you had a thought on Chapter three, uh, we want to know what that is because we might not spend a lot of time on Chapter three. It just sort of depends. Exactly. On, we're really pulling out really what, what Sir Matt thinks is cool, like what hit mm-hmm. him as as awesome and neat and epic and. And he may ask, you know, even clarifying questions uh, about certain characters because it is a lot. We actually um, shout out to one of our bannermen over on Bend the Knee, uh, Lord Hunter, who uh, tore through the first book and was at first it is just getting the terminology down of the world and understanding the structure and the setup here. And once you mm-hmm. start start to get that terminology down, well, then, then we then we can uh, add on to the story and figure out where the plot is going and follow. And we can follow some of our favorite characters. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, much. Um, actually, it's going to be like I'm back in school a little bit because, uh, you know, Sir Ezra being a uh, English teacher, uh, it's, you know, I, it <clears throat> reminds me of, of back in 
back in school when you had to read a chapter and then you'd get, you know, the teacher would be standing at the front of the class asking a bunch of questions about what you thought and you have to go back over it. So that's uh, kind of what it's going to be like a little bit, I think, just in our discussion. Yeah, does that, does that uh, mean I get to assign you a grade at the end of every... Uh, end of every <clears throat> well, I mean, I hope not, man, because I barely passed just about anything in high school, okay? Let me tell you, so... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> if, that's, if that's the case, I might have to do some remedial podcast episodes, <laughs> just like I had to do remedial classes, <laughs> sheesh, so... Oh uh, uh, yeah. Do okay. We have, well, do we, well yeah. do we have summer podcast scheduling? Or yeah, anything? maybe. Yeah, summer school. So, yeah, that's funny. All yeah, right. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll keep it chill. We'll keep it chill. Um, mm-hmm. So we have segments though for our show. We want you guys to kind of get used to our, our segments. And our first one is just a hero's welcome. So, you know, it's really just us kind of uh, checking in, seeing what, what's going on. Uh, again, Matt lives over in Portland. I live over. I live here in Ohio. So, uh, it's nice to check the weather. You know, we just mm-hmm. see what's hey, going on. It's, it's cold and rainy here, but it's cold and rainy every day. So, I mean, do you have snow? Is it, What's going on out there? Ah, uh, dude, it's, it, they actually say, uh, so when this episode, we're, we're posting this on the uh, 25th of December, so uh, a little Christmas, holiday yeah, Christmas, you know, yeah. gift for, for folks. And uh, it is supposed to be like 50 degrees. Uh, we're recording mm-hmm. on my birthday, actually. Exactly. Hey, happy birthday. Do they have a special name in Wheel of Time? I haven't come across it yet. In, yeah, I, in, in in Game of Thrones, you have your it's your name day. Do they have something day, yeah. like that? Is that is there is that's going to spoil something? If it's going to spoil no, something, no, no, it's not going to spoil okay. anything. No, I, I don't know if there actually. I don't think there is actually a you a know terminology name day. For it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what, what's actually interesting too when like this this series, it uh, it really does just follow. It's not. Um, it does follow a band of uh, a core group of characters, and mm-hmm. we really just. Yeah, we kind of stick right there. We're not do- like in in, um, in Game of Thrones. Like a lot of times, we're bouncing back and forth through the histories, and we're checking out seasons and stuff. Now, there is a lot to do with weather and um, right eh, how time is measured, I guess, if you will, and calendars that are kind of tricky. But uh, yeah, no, so so I don't know. I mean, it's uh, I guess we'll use the term name day until we come across something, uh, you know, in, in the series. But yeah, it's um, so yeah, this was kind of a treat for me too. I get to get to record the prologue on my on my birthday and it's it's uh, perfect it's pretty epic so hey perfect well happy birthday man hey thanks man appreciate it so um all right though so yeah again this is this will be kind of where and if you guys have updates on live or cool things that are happening or you guys get tidbits about the show typically we'll talk about the show news here we're going to save that for uh january uh first when we do our first episode and we kind of go over uh the first batch of chapters and we'll talk about just some of the casting and all that kind of stuff because it's pretty exciting and it's pretty neat uh, just to see what they're doing, and they're moving right along. They are really just. I know. When, dude, I don't know that we have. We don't have an official release date, but certainly they've got a cast and crew. I mean, it's it is moving. So yeah. I would I would I would my my ex- I would say probably twenty twenty one realistically. I think is when we would get it, or very or late twenty twenty at the earliest. Yeah, yeah, pro- probably so. Yeah. Uh, so so that'll be neat. It's 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 kind of cool because their Twitter. Um, is they keep that pretty well up to date, and they've they've been giving a lot of updates there. Uh, it, it used to be on Wednesdays, but now just recently the showrunner said that uh, it it just so they can get us more information, they're not going to wait till Wednesday. So if something comes out on a Monday, uh, they're going to tweet about it or they're going to put a little promo reel out there or something. So that should be that should be pretty neat, and, and we can you know look forward to that. Um, hashtag Twitter. Twitter of time is is blowing up too. That was a big thing for a while there, where people were creating characters, and and uh, uh, we definitely got involved in that a little bit. And it was it was mm-hmm. fun to meet a new, a, a couple friends along the way, and uh, we're hoping to continue that as we get into these uh, books a little bit more. But yeah, so anyways, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted on on show news there and uh, and all that good stuff in our uh, segment titled "A Hero's Welcome." Yeah. Now, um, because you know it, this is this is heroes of the horn right i mean mm-hmm. either you are a hero or you're not a hero okay are you a dark yeah. friend what are you well that, all right whoa whoa <laughs> i was like well, yeah, say, wait. <laughs> i was like what does that mean uh <laughs> no uh, just yeah we, we're all we're covering the prologue matt has read the first uh, 17 chapters so um yes. and i don't know i want to re- remind people too that it is sort of my job uh I, I fully anticipate a few dark friends trying to get out there and spoil the end of the series uh, or spoil mm-hmm. things for Sir Matt. So uh, I will be yeah. on I guard. mean, there is a, there is a I mean, to, just before we start, there is a little bit I know about some of the like who the some of the main characters are. I mean, just yeah, because I have my brothers are, are all big into it. And, you know, they've told me about some of the stuff in the past. But it's you know, I don't I there's there's so many books and stuff like that. I don't know, like every intricate 
detail um, Mm -hmm. along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and really, here's the thing, too, just just to be honest with folks. I mean, so, um, you know, I've I've had several read through read throughs. The first three books are kind of my favorite. I love reading through uh, that arc and I've I've done so uh, numerous times. But there is a lot later on that is it's. It's, it's a lot to keep in the old mind, and it's a lot to... So we, we actually have a lot of companion books and things that we'll try to use to help us out along the way. Um, exclusively over on Patreon, we're doing sort of a, a histories, like a, like a look at the at the histories, mm-hmm. if you will, So which I don't think is as much... There's not a lot of spoiler stuff in there. They really When they wrote the... the uh, it's called uh, The World of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time. Uh, it's the white book, I call it. And uh, it, it doesn't really spoil anything necessarily there are, it kind of leaves things uh hanging it even uh, some chapters will end and almost like indicating that there's more to come and that these things are gonna you know uh be a big deal later on in the series and they don't really uh go go uh clear to the end so and when we say non-spoiler there may be things i may mention some stuff at the very end of this first book or even things that lead into the second book so we will be looking a little bit ahead. It's not like it's going to be only just on the first 17 chapters because you know we want to make predictions. We want to think about what is coming next and and sort of look at. Uh, it's kind of neat to see. Did I get it right? Was there enough evidence laid there uh, to kind of tell me you know uh, what what's what's coming in the next chapter or at the end of the book or whatever? And Robert Jordan has even said like he liked uh, having you know his editor and and listening to audiobooks specifically audiobooks. He said at the end that he. Uh, enjoyed listening to the book because he could kind of hear how it was. There's even some interpretation in in the reading um, of a story, and so he wanted to see if what he put in there landed. And did he need to do more work to to uh, communicate certain themes or elements of his story? So, pretty pretty fascinating. Um, yeah. Okay. So with that, um, let's see here. So our next segment is the village council. Which, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's the village council because uh, uh, we we are not a part of the women's circle. Okay, so there will right. be. And yeah, we're not. Yeah, there. But that's there, not. That, but that's not to say. Yeah. That we will not have a women's circle join us at uh-huh. some point on on the show. That's right. That's exactly. It's right. It's just that Sir Ezra and I are not allowed. We're not allowed to be no. part of the women's circle. It's 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 women's business. We're not we're not allowed to be involved. Mm-hmm. Now they do they do tell us what's up and they do communicate a lot to us. Absolutely. Uh but but here in the in the village council we do our very best, our 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 humble best here to try and figure out this series. So with that actually the the prologue kind of starts and we're going to jump right into this. It it's it, it occurs during the time known as the Age of Legends. And what a cool, what a sick, just like title, mm-hmm. right? The Age mm-hmm. of Legends. Man, I, I love like, I remember what was sitting, uh, it was, um, uh, let me think here, it was, it was the long expected party. We did this little party down at my buddy Lane's house for our Up Talking Tolkien group. And I and people who wanted to know about the series, I, start, I started kind of talking about um, the dragon and, and uh, you know, Luce Theron and, and, uh, the Age of Legends and this this whole bit and it's just sort of a epic telling you know this is way this is set like three thousand years before um, our our main story actually starts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right yeah I mean immediately yeah immediately in this prologue here um, do you mind can I can I can I read yeah. just kind of the opening paragraph here absolutely it's just it's just it's, just, it's what I like to do. The palace still shook occasionally as the earth rumbled in memory, groaned as if it would deny what had happened. Bars of sunlight cast through rents in the walls made uh, motes of dust glitter where uh, they yet hung in the air. Scorch marks marred the walls, the floors, the ceiling. Broad black smears crossed the blistering paints and glitz of once bright murals. Soot overlaying crumbling friezes of men and animals which seemed to have attempted to walk before the madness grew quiet. The dead lay everywhere. Men and women, children, struck down in an attempted flight by the lightning that had flashed down every corridor or seized by the fires that had stalked them or sunken into stone of the palace, the stones that had flowed um, and sought almost alive before stillness came again. Wow, man. I mean, <laughs> Sums we're, up, talking, man. we're talking about some epic. It, lo- it seems as if some sort of um, like epic battle yep, or yep. explosion. 
Um, I mean, mm-hmm. something something's going on has something big has happened. Yeah, Ileana. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ileana, my love. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, dude, Lu- Luce Theron Telamon is mm-hmm. is walking around this palace, and mm-hmm. he is just seeing. Well, actually, he's not really seeing. He's not the the destruction and the bodies yeah. laid everywhere. It's almost it's almost as if he's he's quite delusional at the at this moment. Right, right. He's, he's he's wondering where his where his wife is, and I I love that. I, I love it in the in the, in the audio book just the way that they, you know, mm-hmm. um, just the way he like he shouts out her name, you know, Ileana. <laughs> he's just like always mm-hmm. trying to trying to find her. Um, yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. it's it's wild. He, this madness and he's he's is growing. yeah he's look he's looking for Ileana as he walks over a, a woman, mm-hmm. a de- a dead woman. Yep, yep, yeah. Her hold her golden hair beauty marred by the horror of her last moments. Her still open eyes frozen in disbelief. Yeah, it's 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 kind of um, it's sad. We don't really it's we're we're confused at the start of this because we're not sure what all this chaos uh, is mm-hmm. is about. Right? Um, mm-hmm. He keeps calling for. He says, "Come to me, my wife. You must see this." And then behind him, the air rippled, shimmered, solidified into a man who looked around his mouth twisting briefly with distaste. So, <laughs> and, and th- this guy, so, so really we have, we have two characters um, in, in this prologue that are speaking and going back and forth with one another. Uh, we have Luce Theron, the dragon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty epic title, by the way. He's known as the mm-hmm. dragon. He was, he was the leader in the hall of servants. Um, you know, he he wore the ring of, of Tamerlan. He he summoned the nine rods of dominion. Uh, he's he's a big deal. He is he's he's our hero, if you will. He is he's he's it, man. I mean, he's the, he's the one who would face down the dark one. Uh, and we'll learn more about sort of his story as as we go along. But uh, he is then then faced with uh, the, the guy who kind of walks out of this shimmer. Uh, he is known mm-hmm. as the betrayer of hope. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, you know, also uh, Luce Theron, Lord of the Morning. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of titles that go back and forth in this conversation. Mm-hmm. Yes, that yes. they that that they say that they 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 each have. Um, you know, once I was called Elaine Moraine Tedrani. Um, you know, mm-hmm. bet- betrayer of hope uh, is is another thing. So men have named you just uh, so nam- so men have. Uh, named me just as they named you Dragon, but unlike you, I embrace the name. Right, right, yeah. It's it is sort of crazy, you know. What the commoners will call these great men is, I think, interesting because e- even as we read the first, you know, I know you're um, one third of the way, I guess, through the first book. It's you have to pay close attention to. The, there's some duality. There's there's a, a double meaning to some of these words. Although the dragon sounds bad, but the dragon could be awesome as well. It could be a really great title. You know, Lord of the Morning sounds good. Now, Betrayer of mm-hmm. Hope uh, doesn't sound that great. No, not so, not, right. not so much. <laughs> but but he has he has embraced uh, that that title, and um, you'll find that uh, that that Morin is is very much in. Uh, he's accepted his his role. He's he's accepted mm-hmm. who he is and and really what um, uh, what his calling is and, and and all of that and now he just just for interesting just as a as a reference here he uh, later is known as a Shamael and he is uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that but he's he's not a good dude and there was a there was a war there was a great war you can tell there was some some chaos some war that that took place here and he's the guy. Who really was second to Luce Theron? I mean, he was like the number two guy, mm. and he obviously. But you can you can you can uh, kind of figure out from from the title there, betrayer of hope that he that he betrayed the Lord of the Morning, and that he went over to the dark side, if you will. But it also is a bit even more confusing because in all of this, you're realizing um, he starts to kind of let Luce Theron know that he's gone mad, that he's gone crazy, and then you think, well. Well, who's the good guy here? What's what's happening? Um, it, it's almost a little ambiguous, if you will. But uh, yeah, so uh, he's talking to him about you know how how he he almost has pity on him, and and that he can't even see the destruction that has taken place 
by his own hand. Yeah. You know? And actually, Elaine um, Morin kind of sees what's going on here. Because no. Luce Theron is still looking for Eliana after, as he, after he shows up. And he's seems like he's starting to kind of remember some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like um, when he says, once I was called Elaine Morin Tedronite, but now. And it's Luce Theron who says, betrayer of hope. Um, and then Elaine Morin kind of looks at him and he's asked almost like he's in shock of what has kind of become of Luce Theron. Um, and he's, you know, he says, look at you. Once you stood first among the servants, once you wore the rings of Tamriel and sat in the high seat, once you summoned the nine rods of dominion, you know, now look at you, a pitiful shattered wretch, you know? And so it's almost, it's almost as if he's, I mean, clearly he's here, he's here, I think, you know, to kill him, I think is kind of his, his his goal but it's almost as if he is he act, he actually almost gets kind of offended right he's like mm-hmm. i will not let you die without without knowing who i am mm-hmm. and how yeah. how i'm how i'm more powerful because he it's it's he doesn't he you know he wouldn't he does he doesn't want to kill someone that's so far beneath him he wants to kill someone that's mm-hmm. almost as equal well it, it's it's sort of like you know when you're when you're getting revenge on someone if you will you you, you want them to know that it was you and you want them to you want them to really sink in and you know it was me i'm the one who i'm a part of the reason that you've gone crazy uh he does mention that um you know that he was once the one who humbled him in the hall of servants so there's a history between the two he said you also defeated me at the gates of perandison so uh, the, the, these two have gone back and forth and and now um he wants him to see truly what he has done and and that he uh was was a part of it, and that he mm-hmm. was uh, a, a part of taking down Luce Theron. So uh, he actually kind of uh, he heals him, right? So mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he raises his hand and, and he he says, "But I fear Shaitan's healing is different from um, the sort you know. Be healed, Luce Theron." He extended his hands, and the light dimmed as if a shadow had been laid across the sun. A uh, pain blazed mm-hmm. in Luce Theron, and he screamed—a scream that came from his depths. A scream he could not stop. Yeah, there's f- yeah. you know it's just a it's it's a painful uh, process, but he's almost like boiling out uh, this mm-hmm. um, this this madness. Mm-hmm. And then it says, you know, slowly, ever so slowly, the pain receded. The outflowing seemed to take a thousand years and left him twitching weakly, sucking breath that uh, through a raw throat. Another thousand years seemed to pass before he could manage to heave himself over. Wow, man. I mean, that's you're talking about mm-hmm. some serious pain that yeah. he's that that's going through him. Right. And then right. again, he starts he starts calling back to Eliana, Eliana. Yep. You know, Eliana. No. Right. Yeah. Now now he's realized that that she's what's going um, on. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> Uh, and, and this is where there's there's they're still trying to bring loose Theron over because he is he is so powerful. And you know, we haven't even really talked about, uh, I guess, if you're just jumping into this and you just jumped right into the series. All you know is that there are these two guys who have a past who seem to have abilities. You know, one guy stepped out of a shimmering sort of like portal. Right. Mm-hmm. shows up here is able to heal loose Theron, who seems to have gone mad and is walking over dead bodies and right. and now he's trying to convince him that he could have her back you know you can have mm-hmm. her back kinslayer uh, the great lord of the dark can make her live again if you will serve him if you will serve me uh, mm-hmm. man yeah um you know then it says yeah Ten years, betrayer, loose there, and said softly, "You know, ten years. Your foul master has wrecked the world, and now, you know, this." And he's uh, then, but then this is where it starts to get interesting, and this is where we st- um, start to learn a little bit about um, the wheel, if if you mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah, he yeah. says he says sh- kind of shouts back at him and says, ten years. You know, you fool. This war has not lasted ten years, but since the beginning of time." You and I have fought a thousand battles with the turning of the wheel, a thousand times a thousand, and we will fight until time dies and the shadow is triumphant. Yep. Yeah, sort of gives you the motives of maybe what the dark one or the shadow wants to do, uh, which, again, uh, in our next batch of chapters, very early on, we start to talk about uh, the dark one and and the turning of the wheel and how the wheel weaves and, and what it all means. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it, it is kind of confusing, and there there is a lot here that we maybe could explain, 
Um, and maybe we will after we get through through this first part because there it is kind of important, I think, going into it, and it, and it helps just to kind of uh, have a foundation uh, upon which you can then add to when you get into the next chapters. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's yeah, it's a lot. So he wants him to remember, remember. Um, you for, yeah. rem- remember your futile attack on the great Lord of the Dark. Remember his counterstroke. Remember even now the hundred the hundred companions uh, are tearing the world apart, and every day a hundred men more join them. What hand slew Ileana, Kinslayer? Not mine, not mine. What hand yeah. struck down every life that bore a drop of your blood? Everyone who loved you, everyone you loved, not mine, Kinslayer, not mine. So he's telling him that uh, you know this. This you were the one. You were the one, and, he, and he's calling him Kinslayer. So this madness has taken over. Uh, you know, it, it's it's sort of like, and they call it right here. You can, you can kind of figure out that there was a counterstroke. So they did strike against this, whoever this great lord of the dark is, um, mm-hmm. and they, they they made their stand or, or they went after him. But he, his counterstroke is what is giving Luce there in so much trouble now. It is what has caused him to become a kinslayer and has driven him mad. And it says, see, you know, even now the hundred companions are tearing the world apart, and every day a hundred men more join them. Uh, it's specifically men, by the way, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's... Uh, yeah, as you as you as you go down a little bit here, um, it says you know, and his children, his own sons and daughters, sprawled like broken dolls, play still, stilled forever, all slain by his hand. Yep. Yeah, and and, and then the, the as he's realizing this, uh, the the betrayer is laughing at him. Um, he's seeing the pain and the anguish in his face, which is what he wants. You know, before he kind of. Uh, lets him die or before he does die if you will he he wants him to see this and realize it and he's just sort of gloating and mm-hmm. and uh and it is neat too um that it's mentioned that they have had this fight a thousand years and that they will fight it for a thousand more years to come every turning of the wheel every age uh age upon age that these these two individuals will fight uh mm-hmm. and you're like how how is that even possible what what's what's the deal here so you'll learn later on about about some of these individuals and how important they are, and you know uh, th- that the that the dragon may be reborn, my friend, right. okay. and that the wheel wills. Yeah, that's right. Right, as the wheel will. Yeah. Leaves. Oh, dude. So it's 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 huge. Um, now this is where uh, so so as the betrayer is laughing at him, he could he could not bear the faces, the pain. He could not bear. Uh, to remain any longer. Desperately, he reached to the true source, uh, to Tainted Sidene, and he traveled. So, what does that mean? He traveled, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, well, and he also he's also, before that, he's shouting, light, forgive me. So, we're immediately kind yep. of are already greeted with this idea of light versus dark in, yes. the, in, this, in this prologue, and that's what it's going to be going forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, so, so he travels away. He wants to get away from this pain and this woe, um, he uses his power uh, to to do this traveling, and he goes to um, a land uh, that, that that was kind of flat and empty. Uh, there's a river flowing by. He was alone, um, as alone as a man could be uh, while still alive. Yet he could not escape memory. Um, he's haunted by his children's eyes, by Ileana's eyes. Uh, tears glistened on his cheek. Light, forgive me, as you say. He was still touching Saedine, the male half of the power that drove the universe, that turned the wheel of time, and he could feel the oily taint fouling um, its surface, the taint of the shadow's counterstroke, the taint that doomed the world. Because of him, because in his pride he had believed that men could match the Creator, could mend what the Creator, what the creator had made, and they had broken in his pride, he had believed. And there's actually a whole lot more. In our, our very first month on Patreon, we're going to be covering literally the Age of Legends and, and what mm-hmm. happened. So if you want more on all of this, it's, it's, that's going to be elsewhere just to kind of keep the feed clean. But there's a lot. There are a lot of decisions that went back and forth between him and, and the women uh, in the Hall of Servants. And there were different factions and groups who believed that there were different ways to take on the Dark One. Um, we'll learn about the boar and, and boring down uh, uh, to this this true power, this source. 
and we'll learn about what that is. It's it's there's a lot, uh, you know, there, and so he feels like uh, that that it's his fault, you know, that he that his that he uh, you know he he felt like he could take on maybe if he would have listened to this these other individuals, there there would have been a different way to go about this. But yeah, anyways, light forgive me, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and this is as we get to the end of this. He is so overwhelmed with this grief and anguish, and he is being driven mad. You know, to get into, you imagine uh, the power as this, I almost think of it as a, a pool um, of whether it's water or if it's a substance or whatever, that when they pull from it or when they channel from it, um, the problem, as you see here, on the surface is a taint. There is a there is something that is spoiling it. And to get to the true source, you have to go through that. And that is the problem that these ma- that these male channelers are having uh, as they try to reach for that source, that power. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what's continuing to kind of corrupt their their minds. Um, and this is where man he just summons he just summons all sorts of power. He does. And he yeah, he seems he seems to teleport, you know, teleport away is where he goes and he finds himself on an on an island. Right. Um, But but then there seems to be is, you know, is there somebody there? Right. He says the black clad man stood staring at the fiery mountain rising out of the plain, his face twisted in rage and contempt. You cannot escape so easily. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. That's not so it's. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, You cannot escape so easily, dragon. It is not done between us. It will not be done until the end of time yeah then he was gone and the mountain and the island uh stood alone waiting right and and we'll learn that later so really what he did this is um this is where sort of they they call it the breaking of the world and it happened over several years but really here is sort of like the climax of of it you know from the heavens it came i mean he is he's um uh, actually, this paragraph is kind of important so you, so you understand sort of what, what happens here. The air turned to fire. The fire turned to light liquefied. Um, the bolt that struck from the heavens would have seared and blinded any eye uh, that glimpsed it, even for an instant. From the heavens it came, blazed through loose Theron, Telamon, bore into the bowels of the earth. Stone turned to vapor as it touched. Uh, the earth thrashed and quivered like a, like a living thing in agony. Um, only a heartbeat did the shining bar exist connecting ground and sky, but even after it vanished and the earth yet heaved like the sea in the storm, molten rock fountained 500 feet into the air and the groaning ground rose, thrusting the burning spray ever upward, ever higher. From north and south, from east and west, the wind howled, snapping trees like twigs, shrieking and blowing as if to aid the glow, the growing mountain ever skyward, ever skyward. So actually really what's happening he is there's a there's actually something really interesting about that uh that that light that that fire that um fire to light liquefied um people mm-hmm. who have read the series before will know what that is and they'll know how significant it is and what he's doing here uh later on we'll hear about a place called dragon mount and that is what he is is sort of creating here he, he he's almost he himself uh, um he's breaking the world and he's he creates a place called dragon mount where he ultimately summons too much of the power and it just this epic sort of explosion and and things happen and it reshapes almost the the world the world yeah Yeah. so and it wasn't just him there were other you know the hundred companions were also uh channeling and they they had gone mad and they had done things that that sort of um you know cities were torn down and mountains were torn down and mountains uh, new mountains were, were lifted again i mean they were out of control out of control and yeah, so it's it's like that really is well, and actually, really an, an important part I think. And we read this in sort of our hype, um, our welcome episode. We talked about the the shadow that fell upon the land, and the world was riven stone from stone. The oceans fled, and the mountains were swallowed up, and the nations were scattered to the eight corners of the world. You know, so that's really this this breaking that's taking place. And again, as I said, when we start our story, this is three thousand years ago, is what they say. Uh, so the seas are boiled and, and the living envied the dead and, and so on. It was, it was the, it was this great breaking of the world. Um, and, and the one who broke it, they named the dragon. So we just so learned age, about, you know, so yeah. an age, an age before our, our main cast of characters who we'll meet in our next episode. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, which, which is, whew. 
It's it's awesome, and so there's all sorts of things, um, you know, about that that time that I I would love to discuss with people and and, and talk more about. I mean, really, the different factions and the Hall of Servants and how cool that was. Because at the start of the story, the way channeling works and and the things that they had learned during the Age of Legend are are not anymore. They they're gone. A lot of things have been lost in time, and uh, nations are. Uh, like borders are different. The, the the lay of the land is different. Uh, the the mark of the of the dark one is is on the land and the blight and and so uh, it it is interesting to kind of explore all of that and figure out really what happened. Um, there's a group of people in the wasteland that are very important to the story who were were, were um, extremely tied into uh, the Hall of Servants and to the Aes Sedai, if you will, which we haven't even really mentioned. So. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about all of that um, soon. There's, there's just, there's, it's so cool, isn't it? I mean, isn't it kind of neat to think it's about great. like this, this time when you know what's, what's even cooler is like the technology that they had, the things that they did. This was actually, and I'm going to mention this because I think it's, it's a hook uh, to come listen to that series. Like this was a time when it was a time of peace. There was no war. Uh, there, 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 there wasn't really. Um, it was an age of an, of enlightenment, uh, in intelligence and and things and uh, scientific sort of discovery and all this cool stuff, right? And they make it so almost like their curiosity um, or their their learning, their knowledge had grown so much that they were exploring the origins of the world and and how it was created. And they got they bore deep and they found something that they shouldn't have found. Um, they, they allowed a presence to enter the world that was never intended to be there. I mean, like just some crazy stuff that happens. And I almost imagine there was like this earnesty in which the hall of servants is rushing around trying to figure out what to do. A war is raging. Some of the most powerful members of the, of the hall of servants, like defect over to the shadow, you know, the most powerful, right? And then Luce Theron is left there trying to figure out, like, what do I do? So there's that whole story that happens, right? Even before the prologue, we just see sort of what happened afterwards. And all along the way in our story, there will be tricklings. There will be little bits of evidence um, or little bits of that telling that will take place through a book, um, a character who who had studied the histories or, or what have you. Um, and it's just kind of neat that Robert Jordan went um, and, and wrote all this down and did sort of a... Um, yeah, like like a history is kind of a study and put it all together and compiled it and I think that's it's really neat so if you ever um, if, you, if you are an experienced reader or and you've never read sort of some of the companion stuff I definitely would encourage you to do that and even if you're going into this for the first time and you're sort of like oh this is this is a lot it's there's a lot of terminology and I don't quite understand how everything fits together then I think you um, should definitely check that out and I'll give you an example and experienced readers maybe will, will understand what I'm talking about um, Oftentimes, we, we, throughout the story, we will hear of the character Luce Theron, and we'll also hear about another one, Arthur Hawkwing. And when I first read this, I kind of thought they were around the same time period. I, it took me it took me till midway into the series to kind of figure out that they were two different people from two different time periods, and it wasn't the Age of Legends, and it was different. And, and so it's kind of nice to know those historical figures, where do they fit, and how did they come to be? Um, what was their what was their actual story and then why are they still being referenced in our, in our uh, main series now? So yeah, gosh, dude, I, I could literally <laughs> like the age of Le- 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 the age of legends is just fascinating to me. I think it's, 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 and so, and so all of that stuff is what we will find in that white book that we're going to be, yes. we're going to, that we're burning through. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, I think it'll really help you. And there, there might be some sec- sections that we skip just because I don't know that you need to know about all these other different countries Yet, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're like you learn about the countries as you come to them, the different nations. Um, but the history is for sure. I think we could we could definitely do that. And then once we get a couple books in, we can go back and explore or as a nation comes up, we can go do a study about that nation. Um, you know, you'll you'll learn you've you've already started to kind of understand in the first batch of chapters that we have um, a nation called Andor. And mm-hmm. a place called, you know, um, Camelin and uh, the two rivers and how does it fit in and the other villages around it. So those are things that we'll kind of study Tarn, along Tarn the way. Ferry. Yeah, don't trust them, right? <laughs> hey, don't trust them. That's what it says. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's just, it's a cool setup to our story. Uh, 
because because there's prophecy too. right at the end of that. He, he starts right in with these uh, people who are prophesying of things, things to come that they're citing old prophecies. Um, and it's just it's neat because there's misconceptions. Even even our, our characters in this main series, um, they have a misconception of what the nine rods of dominion are and what, uh, you know, s- s- some of the things that they that they did with they had artifacts. Um Terangrial, um, Sangrial, and all these different things that they used during the Age of Legends that were developed that they they have um, misconceptions on. They don't really know what they were used for. And it's kind of neat to see them learn about that and piece the history together to help tell their story now. Uh, so, I don't know. Just awesome. Awesome. No, it sounds, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, so, 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 like, I guess my, like, big takeaway from this prologue is, one, we need more loose Theron. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, two. Also, though, I mean, everything that you know, it's it's described, and I think it's a cool. I think it's a cool chapter, um, just as the little bit that I've read, because um, they reference some of this, uh, not specifically this character, but some of the some of the the stories, right? As we yeah. as we progress through um, the first seventeen chapters, is, is what I've read so far, um, and that's what we'll be covering until february yeah mm-hmm. um when we where our main characters that we were going to meet rand and matt um when they when they you know they talk about the the, the dragon and, and yes. dark ones and and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that and and the kind of the the leg led the legend of it mm-hmm. um, yeah and so oh man you know you look back at this prologue and here's a lot of that stuff that they're describing um much later in time going on yes exactly yeah it's it's sort of like um Almost after you read the first several chapters of this first batch, it's probably been good for you to go back and say, "Yeah, I can, I can see it." There is light versus dark. There are these. You're, you're either on one side or the other. Um, and even though there will be many self-serving sort of groups, you know, in in the series as we go, ultimately those are the two big, um, you know, uh, gods, if you will, or right, or, or whatever. Right. Um, you got to pick a side. And so, yeah, like like you said, you hear references to the dragon and the dragon's mark and like the, the dragon's tooth. And you're sort of like, what is that? What does that mean? And and you could even see um, the betrayer of hope kind of speaking to the Lord of the morning and saying to him, you haven't embraced your name. I did embrace my name. Um, so there was sort of this, you know, and I almost and I need to go back and look like. Uh, it's interesting to see, were they calling him the dragon before? Or did they call him the dragon during the war? Did they call him the dragon after the war? You know, or after the breaking? Uh, so those are the types of things that when you think about how someone was given their title uh, and, and what they, what, what did that mean? You know, there's there's an mm-hmm. evolution there. There's a, there's a story. You know, he's once called the Lord of the Morning, and then he's given other titles. Well, it's because of the deeds that he did upon uh, in, during yeah, his you life. Ga- yeah, you go, you gain titles as you go, as you go on. Yeah. You're in this, you're in this town, you're something people may say, oh, he's the hero of, of this town or he's right. the, you know, villain of, of this one, depending on what side you're on and, mm-hmm. and however exactly. they progress. Yeah. Right. And I would say pay attention to, to Rand as, as you know, he and these other characters, Rand, uh, Matt and Perrin, all of them, as they go through their story, look at it's, you know, it's it gets an epic tale. I mean, if you know those three, those are the three main characters, and you look at what happens to them, the titles that they gain, the experience that they gain, uh, it's it's um, it's pretty cool to pay attention to. And and all of those titles, by the way, are connected to the histories, and that's why I think it's really important to do sort of a dive into that and understand the progression, I guess, of of this world and how like who was in charge of it after the breaking. Um, how did the Aes Sedai fit into it? Uh, who is this emperor who came in and sort of conquered everything except for this nation? You know, all that stuff is really neat. You've got the Trolloc Wars. You've got all these different things that happened before our story even takes place. And they will reference those things throughout the story. So um, I always think it's neat to kind of, I think that's fair game to kind of go back and, and look at and say it's not really spoiling what's what's to come. It's, it's really just helping mm-hmm. add to the story uh, as, as you go. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I mean, so yeah, next, uh, so <laughs> coming up here in January, we will be covering this first batch of chapters and um, pulling out some of our, our big um, big takeaways. We're going to do a couple readings from those chapters 
and uh, Matt's going to pull some of his big takeaways. I'm going to pull some of my big takeaways. If you guys have takeaways, things that you thought were really cool, worth mentioning, uh, connections, whether they be spoiler or non-spoiler, doesn't matter. I would love for you to send those to us. Um, we have a segment at the end of the show dedicated entirely to um, us kind of communicating and talking with you guys. Um, so that is basically going to be our, you know, whether you enter a way gate or you contact us through Teleron Riyadh, uh, whatever you want to do, it's a little bit dangerous, but if you want to do it that way, you can, um, but send us some, some of your thoughts. It could be on Twitter. Um, we have a Facebook page. Um, our Patreon is, is really where we're going to be communicating. I think the most with folks, we're going to be taking in, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff, and you know what? I, actually, I I need to pull this up because I was going to introduce folks to this. We actually have created a pretty sick, um, a lot of a lot of times on Patreon, you you push a lot of stuff that cost you know I don't know you have to you have to pay to go see, um, but we plan on actually putting a lot of stuff there that is just free. Mm-hmm. So so it's going to be kind of a companion piece. I mean, we want people to to study the histories with us, and we want you to kind of learn that piece and so you don't have to necessarily go pay for that you can just go over to patreon and listen to it it's just a, a it's a separate sort of like rss feed that you can put into your podcast player and you can kind of hear uh, all of that so that that should be fun for you guys to go check out but there's links down in the description for all of that and uh there's some there's some really cool let's just say this there um there are some limited spots over on over on patreon that you might want to go check out and you might want to grab if you want to be a part of the book club and and uh there's some cool rewards with those but yeah man i mean right we want people to send us their their stuff and you can send that to um the horn of valier at gmail.com no kidding yeah. that's the freaking handle it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> like it is so cool uh that, that we have that. that is also our handle over on twitter uh where we've got quite a we've actually amassed quite a bit of uh following in a, in a short amount of time and so we're kind Which of excited yeah, yeah, we're really excited about that. So if you want to contact us there, uh, direct messages are are definitely welcome there, and we will read those on uh, the show. So if you have predictions too, if you're a first time reader, and you, we actually have a segment too where uh, we're going to see if Sir Matt has the gift of foretelling. We're going to see if he can make predictions, um, and then we will. So maybe I will give him a grade. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe hey. I will come back and say, uh, did you get anything right or did you not? So, um, and, and, and you guys can send in your predictions too and see if you have the gift of foretelling and uh, as, as we move move forward. So uh, we will see. And, and if I can tell, by the way, that you've already read the series and you're, you're specifically pointing out things that are coming and you know for a fact that they're coming, uh, then I will be all over that, okay? Perfect. <laughs> so, so, all right, well... Um. Yeah, we we want to thank you. Hey, thank you guys for answering the call. In our next episode, we will be discussing the Eye of the World chapters one through nine. Yeah, absolutely. So make sure you read that and send in your thoughts uh, to, uh, to to us here at the show and follow us on all the social medias. And uh, uh, we're really looking forward to having you guys along for the ride. It's it's going to be awesome. We want you to be a hero of the horn and answer the call. So. Uh, With that, if you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a message at thehornofvalier at gmail.com. We will see you January 1st, and remember, the grave is no bar to our call.